Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 26 beta 4. iOS 26 beta 4 is available to developers and iOS 26 public beta 1 that we've all been waiting for should be available either later today or more likely sometime tomorrow and I'll let you know when that's out. This particular update does bring back some of the things we've wanted for a while. We'll talk about that in a moment, but this came in at 13.06 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 pro max. I did see some people say it was under two gigabytes. I'm not sure why it's larger for me, but maybe it needed to reinstall it based on what you were installed on or your device. And now this was released alongside many other updates with iPad OS 26 beta 4, TV OS and HomePod OS 26 beta 4, Vision OS 26 beta 4, Watch OS 26 beta 4, along with Mac OS 26 beta 4 as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 23A5297I. And with this particular build, they've fixed quite a few things. But the first thing is we do have a new modem update going from beta 3 to beta 4. So hopefully that will help with overall connectivity as I've had some issues with that as well. Now, as far as new features, the first major change here is liquid glass is back. So for example, I'll compare it with beta 3 on the left beta 4 on the right. If we go into music and the main thing that you can see this on is in light mode. So if we switch over here, you can see the overall background here is back to sort of a glass look instead of a frosted glass look. You can see that as we scroll through different albums and it looks much better. If we go into the control center here, it's not much of a difference. However, it is a big difference depending on what you're looking at. So if we go into maybe Safari here and scroll down, we'll go to the same thing. You can see the glass effect on the right is definitely a little bit better. And also if we go into weather, it's a little bit different as well. So let's go into the stock weather app and you can definitely see this in weather where it's now liquid glass, where it was just sort of a darker icon before, even though I'm in light mode. Also, we can see the change in dark mode. So in music here, you can see it's definitely has more of a glass effect to it and it changes dynamically based on what you're looking at. So again, they've made a change in dark mode and in light mode, and it looks great. You can also see that on the search screen here as we're scrolling through, even in dark mode, it has more translucency and sort of a glass appearance and looks a little bit better. And you can see it's only slightly different in the app store. So depending on the app you're in, it looks like they're continuing to modify this, but it's not completely different depending on where you go. The same is true if we go into mail. If we go into mail here, you'll see that on beta four, it's now darker. This is something I think they'll change maybe with beta five, but at this point, it's not complete throughout every single app. Something else that's different is if we go to the lock screen and go to our notifications, you'll see that it dims the background dynamically based on how many notifications you have. As I scroll them down out of the way, it lightens the background. And as I scroll them up, it dims the background. So it makes them easier to read. So this is sort of a nice dynamic move to make them easier to read the background when using liquid glass. We also have a new wallpaper. With the wallpaper, they also have a dynamic wallpaper option now. So you'll see it changing here. If we go into it, it will dynamically change as you just let it sit here. So it's rotating through all the different wallpaper, light and dark mode, and goes through them slowly and dynamically. So this is a nice change. They've brought this back. Hopefully we see more of these in the future. Now within our phone options, we have an update for screen unknown callers. We have a whole section dedicated to it where before we could just turn it on and off where it said calls from unknown numbers. Now we have three different options. For never, calls from unsaved numbers will ring and missed calls will be displayed on the recents list. We can also have it ask reason for calling or silence calls from unsaved numbers. So that's an option now if you wanna change it based on how you want it to screen callers at the time. Now, right after you install iOS 26 beta four and it reboots, it will then bring you to the hello screen. However, that only seems to be on phones that support Apple intelligence. So an iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max and newer. However, you will be greeted with a new screen asking you to set up notifications again. You'll see that here. I posted it on threads and it says iOS 26 beta four now has you choose if you want news notifications. This is something they previously took away because it was causing issues with the overall notifications. And once you select it, so you'll see you have the option for news and entertainment, communication and social, and all other apps. Once you select it, it actually warns you that summarization may change the meaning of the original headlines, verify the information. So you have the option, they've brought this back. It's something that they previously took away. And of course, if you go into your settings under notifications and you have Apple intelligence, you'll have the summarized notification option. So you can select those news apps if you'd like. Now, something you may have already noticed is the overall camera icon is different. 
They've updated it here on the right with beta four compared to beta three, and you can see the difference there. The overall bezel around the camera lens is a little bit different, and maybe this hints at iPhone 17 lenses, we don't really know, but either way, it's been updated and many people seem to like it a little bit more. Also, the first time you go into the camera app, you'll be greeted with a new summary. So it gives you a little splash screen, and I took a screenshot of that, and you can see it here on iPhone 11, the first time you actually open this up, it says new camera design. A streamlined design elevates photo and video modes, simply swipe left or right to access additional modes. Tap the control button on the top to access settings. So it's just giving you a little more information there, and then it looks like it's fixed for most people. So if you go into photos, for example, you can swipe left or right, and get more settings. So swipe again to the right, get more settings, and it's just telling you how to use it a little bit different. So if you wanna swipe through those modes, you can do that. And it seems like the switch camera icon is more pers persistent this time around. So if you wanna switch back and forth, you can do that. And it's just a little update to the camera app. Now, if you use files, there's a nice little update here as well. If we go into files and within files, you'll see all of my images here, but on any new file, you can press and hold. And if we go to open with, we now have a new option for preview with quick look. If we select that, now if we tap on it, it will then immediately open up and you can preview it with quick look. So that's a nice little update here where before if I tap on this one, it has to download it, give it just a second, and it will go into it now that I've selected that for images. But before it would go into the previews app, now we can quick look right here. So that's a really nice update we've been waiting for. Also, something else I noticed is if we go into the share sheet, it looks a little bit different. So if we go to share, you'll see the overall icons with the glyphs are a little bit more bold or highlighted. So I noticed this right away on the iPad. It was a little less obvious on the iPhone, but they're definitely more bold around the overall icon. You can see the square or the rectangle there is a little thicker as far as the overall stroke to it. So you can see that here. Also, if we go into the app switcher, it shows us our main app with additional apps here. Sometimes it spreads out. Sometimes it shows us just the app we're currently in. So it may actually change. Maybe it was a bit of a bug. As far as bugs and bug fixes, well, good news in the contacts app, search is back. If we go into contacts, you'll see at the bottom, search pops right up. Some people saw this disappear and then couldn't get into anything. Also, Siri seems to be responding again for many people. And on older iPads, there's an odd bug when you turn on assistive touch. So if we go back over, go into our accessibility options under touch and then assistive touch, if we turn this on, on some iPads, you'll see here, we can customize it, of course, but the overall icon for assistive of touch is squared off on some old iPads. I'm not seeing it on the iPad Pro or my iPhone, but some people are actually seeing that. But if you're using it, it may be squared off and it looks like it's a little bit of a bug. Now, at the time of this video, Apple has not yet updated its release notes. We still have beta three and the same is true in the feedback app. So you'll see things from iOS 18.6 RC, but nothing with the latest beta. So hopefully they update that soon. Maybe we'll get some more information as far as what bugs or bugs are fixed or what still remain and what the known issues are here that we need to look for. But if you are having issues, make sure that you report them in the feedback app. And once those notes are updated, you can see if it's already a known issue. Now, as far as overall releases, based on what we've had already, I would expect iOS 26 public beta one to be sometime tomorrow if it's not out by the time you're watching this video. If there's no additional issues with iOS 26 beta four, we could expect it tomorrow. If there are issues, we could see a re-release and then a public beta. So it depends on what Apple finds, but hopefully we see that public beta as soon as tomorrow or already if you're watching it, this video and it's already released. As far as iOS 18.6, I would expect iOS 18.6 to release to the public probably next Monday. And we could also see an iOS 26 beta five, maybe on Tuesday. It depends if we're on a weekly cycle. Usually by this time in the betas we are, so we could see beta five, then beta six, seven, and eight, and then maybe a release candidate. So we don't really know the actual schedule as Apple doesn't share it, but based on what we've seen in the past, that's what I would expect. We could also see iOS 18.7 beta one. However, based on what they've done with iOS 18.6, I'm not sure we'll see that. And then also iOS 26 public beta two, maybe next week, if there's no additional issues. So it could be a week or a couple weeks at this point. We don't have specific release dates, but as soon as I know, I'll be sure to let you know. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 26 beta four at this point, if you're on beta three, definitely install this update, provide feedback, test it out, try out the new liquid glass updates, let us know if there's issues. However, if you're not yet, I would wait for the public beta at this point. Based on what we've seen in the past, that's usually when it's more stable, and that's what I would wait for if you're not on them already. As far as overall performance, well, so far it's pretty good. There was a little bit of lag there I saw. We do have it on 
iPhone 11 as well, and it seems to be fairly fast after it's processed for a while in the background. You'll see things like ProMotion doesn't seem to be as fast here. Maybe it's not ramping up as fast. It seems a little bit slower, or that could be the animation speed. But you'll see overall it seems to be generally pretty good with opening up apps. There's a little bit of lag maybe, and that's what I would expect with the latest update. So if we go maybe into camera, you'll see this here, we'll go to photo and everything seems to be generally pretty fast, but maybe the animation speed is a little bit slower, but it does need to complete processing in the background and the overall heat is manageable, not as hot as before, but definitely it's doing something as the phone is quite warm. As far as the overall battery, well, it will take some time to test that, but so far on this device, it hasn't been great with beta three. It's been better than beta two, but let's give it a moment here. And you'll see here, if we go down battery health, I'm currently at 97% with 271 cycles and the overall usage will go into this here. If you battery usage, you'll see, well, yesterday was 94% of my battery used and I only had four hours and 24 minutes of screen active time. Definitely an improvement over beta two, but not great so far. So far today, I've had two hours and 41 minutes of screen active time and I'm down to 62%. So already it's doing better with beta four. But again, we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. As far as overall storage that it's using, let's go back here, take a look. We'll go to storage and see what we're using compared to beta three. So if we scroll to the bottom, we are using a little bit more data than beta three, but take a look here at Apple intelligence using 7.53 gigabytes compared to 6.23 gigabytes. Maybe that has to do with notification summaries and other things going on in the background, but either way, it's very close to the regular updates that we're seeing. So 13.56 for iOS, which is a little bit smaller for a total of 21.09 gigabytes. So iOS is a little bit smaller, but Apple intelligence is a little bit larger. As far as benchmarks, I did run those initially. I ran it a couple times and actually it's pretty good so far. If we go to the benchmarks, you'll see the history here. We have 3,438 for single core, 8,564 for multi-core. Compared to what we've had before, it's definitely better than beta three or any of the previous betas. So hopefully this one performs much better, is much more power efficient and more, but we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up where we'll go over how battery life is and any new features we find as well. So that's everything with iOS 26 beta four. Of course, if I find additional features, I'll let you know in the weekend follow-up video, we'll cover heat performance, battery life, and more. So we have to use it for a while and then we'll talk about it then. If you found anything additional as far as features or changes, let me know in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.